Let's see. First of all, let's get rid of all these friends. All pals. Yeah. They're all dead now. Oh, man. Everybody dead. Shefflin really uh, handled those negotiations. Yeah, he... It's just like, I'm sick of this shit. It's a Marisol side story. <laughs> Your character got a message. Oh, Miss sweet. B. It says to meet her at the... Gangster's Paradise. Also, who joined? What the hell? Uh, me, if you're gaming right, what are you guys doing with? Oh, hey, sir. Oh. I was doing a solo session, uh, and yeah. oh. Marisol was recording it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm being an out. asshole. No, so, I'm gonna be fun. No. Uh, the mystery fish, the last time, it, it solved the Ten of Swords, and it gave you guys a bank card. She's gonna swing by a bank and, like, uh, put it in an ATM. You get the balance question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm just gonna pocket it and just continue on to gangsters. It is boarded up. Uh, it has seen better days. Looks like there are people inside cleaning up more than more than actually previously. Uh, like there's there's staff, more staff. Not only cleaning it, but they are doing what looks like some remodeling and just doing some work. There is a guy by the door, but they know you. This bee has her back turned to you. She's talking to uh, C Cicero. Cicero kind of clears his throat and motions with his head towards you. And uh, Miss B turns around. Glad you can make it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, Miss B, all you have to do is summon me. I bet you had trouble picking me out, right? No, not at all. Really? Even though I'm wearing this disguise? It's a pretty good disguise. But no, I I just recognized you right away because of your uh, presence. Hmm. Cicero kind of chuckles, says, yeah, you mean because of the suit and the hat and the fact that she's here and also same build and I mean, it, it, it's all pretty obvious. It's all pretty obvious, B. I told you nobody's gonna fall for this. Miss B reluctantly takes her wig off. Well, it was worth a shot. She kind of like puts it away into her coat. <laughs> I have to work on that. I'm glad you can make it. You'll be glad to know that under the new rules that are being established for earth businesses and such, we are going quote unquote legit, thanks to certain connections that I've, of course, managed to foster with the local law enforcement. She flutters her eyelashes a little. Oh, um, that's that's good. Officials probably going to make things easier, actually. Not really. <laughs> Our profitability might take a hit. But that's fine. I'm sure in time we'll be able to resume operations as normal. Quote unquote, normal. Mm. <laughs> We've also been in contact with a few of our people on Earth. So once they open up ships again, and who knows when that'll happen, we'll be able to get some more of our people up here. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a, for a while, Miss B. Wait, you talked to the CEO? Well, I, uh, you know, my friends and I did. Uh, we ended up getting summoned to talk to who we thought was just gonna be Kev Kavan, and we ended up being in a somewhat of a trial with the Seven Nation Army representatives. And uh, Jeff Lynn was there. You know my friend Simone? I'm familiar. Yeah, she uh, was muttering under her breath, and he basically banished her from the room. Well, we thought, we weren't really sure where she went, but she just disappeared out of out of the air. We, we found her outside though, like outside of the building. We were like 70 floors up and she was just like on the ground and she said she like fought for her life basically. Uh, so it sounds like she went to like some other dimension. That's all we could really gather from this, his stand. But it sounds pretty nuts. That sounds like Germanata. Yeah. Yeah, it does actually. I, I don't know if she's stronger or he's stronger than her. 
I knew he was scary, but I just assumed it was because he was, you know, basically the boss. I, I didn't even know he had a stand. Uh, I definitely know Lewis Clark's ability. The Seven Nation Army guys wouldn't care about Simone mouthing off. And uh, I don't know what Kev Kavan can do, but I don't think that was his work. It had to have been Jeff. Oh, you ain't never seen Kev stand before. Yeah. It's cute. It, it cute? <laughs> it's precious, really. Precious? I think so. I haven't. Uh, he probably wouldn't want me telling anybody what it is. It, it, it's fine. I don't need to know unless I ever uh, am on the um, opposite end of his... Uh, <laughs> she just laughs nervously. I, I hope to never have to know, basically. She like she looks like she's really trying to hold in a secret. And she like puts a hand on your shoulder and leads you over. All right, I'll tell you. Hold on, hold on. I'll tell you. All right, but you have to promise to keep it to yourself. Oh. If he finds out that I told you, he probably is going to give me an, an earful about it. I don't know exactly how it works either, so I guess I can't give that away. It's she like kind of whispers like it's a little man that sits on his shoulder with like like a telescope or a spyglass, something like that. What? That's all it is. Oh, uh, I I mean, surely it does more than that. If it does, I don't know what it does. It just sits on there and sometimes whispers to him. Huh. Uh, it, yeah, it's probably best that mm, my friends don't know about that anyway. Mm -hmm. And if there's something our friends are not supposed to, uh, mm -hmm. can I just be right there? Can he just, can he just come in and be like, don't, not supposed to know what? What oh, would roll oh, you want to have roll in there? <laughs> sure, why not? Just, just for an instant, just for a moment, just for this, just in inexplicably there, and then just walks out a door and is never seen again. Yeah, he walks in, he just says that. Everyone stares at him as he leaves. The hell? Where, where was he, where, where was he even? Where, where did that, where, where did he come from? I, I don't know how that guy functions at all. He just kind of does have some sort of like space ability. I don't really fully understand. So maybe he can just pop in and out. Another fearsome stand user, I suppose. Uh, he's been handy to have on the harsh side, yeah. Don't know if you know this, but that's, uh, you know my friend Nia, the loud one with the skates? Yeah, that's that's her butler. Do you just hang around with a bunch of rich bougie moon people who have butlers and shit? Not out of, it was just luck, just dumb chance, really. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm It seems like the moon's treating you well, then. I guess I never told you how I got in with those guys. Well, generally, the story is y'all were involved in some sort of terrorism incident, correct? Yeah, I'm sure Cicero filled you in. And uh, if Cicero wasn't so too cool, <laughs> I guess, she rubs the back of her head, he'd probably be in the group, too. Yeah, he works for me, though. Cicero, do you want to join this group of adventurers and do-gooders and go on various quests and whatever it is? I don't know what y'all actually do. You know what? You got that nice car outside, don't you? Yeah. How about we go for a drive and you can fill me in on some things? Close to the taxes in this city, which are... A little dangerous, yeah. I was going to say operated by a madman. Oh. But yeah, dangerous. In fact, I've been thinking about going to that taxi company and seeing what's going on there. We can go in quiet, small numbers. I doubt it's going to be dangerous. Quiet, you say. Uh, so I'm not going to call my friends. Uh, how about Ricky? Hmm. She is quiet. Ricky uh, turns away from the game of cards she's playing with Frank then looks a little annoyed because she has a small 
pile of uh, chips, and Frankie has a big pile of chip. She kind of turns to Frankie, shrugs her shoulders, and makes like a, I'm so sorry, uh, kind of, Frankie just kind of grumbles. Yeah, of course. Easy out. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Convenient timing. And then puts down his cards. Uh, Ricky kind of like shrugs again and walks away, gathering up with the remaining chips she has. All right. Well, it'll be a bit of a girl's not out. I'll go outside, and when Ricky sees Sweet Sangria, she freezes. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, Miss B actually, like, tucks a finger to her chin and then looks at Sweet Sangria and then looks at... Oh, yeah, I see. It's it's because the, the car is purple, you see, and she loves the color purple. I, I think she's in love. Oh, that's that's very sweet. Oh, uh, that's her name, by the way. Sweet Sangria. Hmm, Sweet Sangria. Yeah. She a uh, has a purple <laughs> grape drink inside that you uh, can help yourself to, actually. Marisol taps the hood and she unlocks. Ricky Ross is already, she just gets right in. Just immediately. This bee kind of shakes her head and falls behind, like lowering her hat so she doesn't get it knocked off. <laughs> Once inside, you can see Ricky. So, so, like, she's just touching everything. She is, like, just entranced. She's like a kid in a candy shop with this car. She loves it so much. Because the interior is, like, black and purple as well. And uh, Ricky is wearing a purple suit as usual, so it is pretty obvious that this is, this is her environment. This be kind of like uh, chuckles. Now, Ricky, you know, you can't keep this car. Maybe we'll get you one like it someday. Oh, um, this is uh, from some rich guy, actually. It's like a unique model. I don't know if, I mean, I can, <laughs> I can definitely take you out in it. like sometime ricky if you need to go anywhere she nods a lot Aww. a lot she starts with the car and uh they just like get going would you get a car like this anyway you said it was a unique model yeah <laughs> yeah it's a funny story so we kind of like ended up going to this like place outside of the city like really far out and it has like a a farm of cars. Anyway, um, uh, long story short, it belongs to Lewis Clark, this car. He kind of like, I don't know if he lent her out to us. It sounded like he gave it to us. I recently found out that it's his favorite car, so I want to give it back to him eventually. So wait a second, you're saying an ELO guy gave you this car? Yeah, he's like really super nice and he's really uh, sweet and very smart and he's super handsome and uh, I I think he's super I I don't know she gets all flustered do you have a crush on this boy <laughs> no <laughs> okay maybe I do like really badly but I um I don't he's like super rich and I like I don't know I can't do anything with that you know well I guess I'm the most experienced one here as far as dating one of them boys goes, huh? How did you and Kevon meet anyway, Miss B? That's kind of a funny story, I guess. He was arresting me at the time. Oh. I made fun of him a lot and uh, made him blush. And uh, <laughs> once you make a boy blush, it's kind of over. <laughs> okay, so um, you charmed him. I guess. It was more like, hmm. He's a strange man, I think. And he doesn't really talk much about things that aren't the job. So if you make him feel a way about things that are not the job, you find a vast and unexplored territory of sorts. He is very serious. He likes law and order and all that bullshit. What? But, but you're not... Uh, well, pardon me, miss, but not very lawful. That's right. 
So what would you say that he likes? I think I know the answer to that question. Or rather, I did figure it out. A man like that is interested in pursuit, chasing, oh. all that sort of thing. All you got to do is give him a nice, merry little chase, something to wrap his head around, and then suddenly he's all in your hands like putty, 